Hi everyone, welcome to Let's Celebrate TV Live. I'm your host, Peter Lee. Today, as always, with me is the guy that makes all this stuff happen. He's the director, producer, cameraman, tech guy, and he's my husband, Phil Gortimer. And good afternoon if you're on the East Coast, good morning if you're on the West Coast of the USA, uh, and a couple of hours back for our northern neighbors in Canada, an early evening for our UK audience. So today, it's all about cocktails. It's all about building your own home bar. So of course, we're gonna start with a cocktail, like always. We're gonna have, as I spill it all over, a pomegranate martini this afternoon. Light and fruity, pretty color. You wanna come get it, dear? And I will come over there. I can get out today. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm not tied in. Let me uh, clean up my mess here. Mm, that's it. Yeah, kind of jump Stay right out of the glass. Board. Well, why not? All right. Cheers and cheers. Thanks for joining us. Ooh, that's, that's good, good stuff. Yeah. A little sweet, but well, yeah. Yeah. And it looks good too on camera. A nice cocktail for three thirty in the afternoon. Yeah, All well, right. Why not? It's eat. light. We're pre gaming, dear. That's it. We're pre gaming. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I don't know if there are any cats back there or not. So, it's all about home essentials for your bar today and uh do you have you so know, i have an opening remark okay. that starts this whole thing up i want to set up a bar but i don't have the room and okay we're going to talk about we're going to touch on that about we're ways gonna, to do it hold on yeah we're going to talk about are. that you don't need a lot of space mm -hmm. and you don't need a hundred bottles of alcohol to start a bar you actually right. only need seven mm -hmm and you don't need 100 glasses. You can get that way, that's where we are now, yeah. but you don't have to start that way. <laughs> or if you're like our friend Ken, he's got glasses all over the place. <sighs> Do you have any other spiel, or should I just jump no, right in? Because you normally can... you're like welcoming people, and where are you it's from? It's a little early, so okay. let's remind everybody again. Right. Yep. Uh, let's get it on the right screen, here we go. Here you are. Let us know where you're watching us from, so say hey, Hi from whatever, mm -hmm. and then we'll put up everybody on a map and see where we are. Just looking back, I see a few. Um, ooh, Melissa's back. Yay. Yay. Welcome hey, back, Melissa. Hey, Melissa. We missed you. Happy Sunday, indeed. Okay, so why would you want to start your own bar at home? Why would you want to have all that? Easy. If you have guests, it's much nicer to be able to offer them a drink, a grown-up beverage, and to make it yourself. If you have parties, it just makes everything easier. And frankly, these days, I'd rather mix a drink at home than go out to a bar and waste money on that. And I think our drinks are probably better and stronger anyway. So why do you want it well stocked? You want a variety of things because you don't know what people are gonna like, and you wanna be able to make your guests feel comfortable and welcome serve them what they want. But you don't have to go out and buy every single liquor in the world in the liquor store to get started. <clears throat> there are some basics that we can start with. So let's talk about some basic booze to have. Of course, there's good old vodka. Whatever brand you like, there you go, dear. And you know, this is one of the ones we keep in house. We like this one. Vodka is neutral. You can make 100 million drinks with it, uh, and you can't go wrong, really. Now, with all these basic boozes, you know, you could really drink all of them straight, too, if you wanted. So in starting a bar, even though there are thousands of rows and thousands of bars in liquor stores, there are only seven categories of alcohol. So that's what we're going to start with here. Okay. You didn't tell me that earlier. I did now. Saving some notes for yourself, I see. Rum, right? It's good to keep a good basic rum on hand for rum and Coke, for tropical drinks, if you want to get fancy, but just for basic things, a good white rum is always good to have around. Our favorite, of course, gin. Good old gin. We love our gin, don't we, dear? And I will point out that... Uh, most of these are one and three quarters. When you're starting a home bar, you're going to start with 750 ml bottles. That way it's right. nice I and small. Right, I thought I had one here. 
Didn't we have one here? I was going to show that. Behind you, I think. Yeah, a uh, triple sec is 750. Oh, okay. I thought I had a better one. So this is a 750. This is much smaller than these big guys. But, you know. The bullet's also 750. We need, we, we need bulk. What's next? Whiskey. We do love our brown booze, too. So we like this as an everyday blended whiskey. It's, it's a good day-to-day -day whiskey to have around. It's usually safe for everyone. Whiskeys go into all different categories. Rye, scotches, bourbons, etc., etc. Uh, but a nice blended whiskey is nice. And there's all the single malt and double malts and all that stuff. So in the seven recommended alcohols... Whiskey is the only one that's duplicated. Yes. So there's a blended whiskey, and then there's bourbon. And here we are. Bourbon's next. This is one of our favorites. Um, bourbon is sweeter than some of the blended whiskeys, uh, but it's always a good thing to keep around. A lot of people love their bourbon. And then, of course, our friend Ryan's favorite. Good old tequila. We don't drink much of this. Considering that we don't drink tequila, that bottle's pretty empty. I was just going to say just that. Just saying. I was just going to say that, dear. Who's, who's been in the tequila? Well, I think someone brought this for a party and like around the holidays. And, and it just, they brought it and then drank it, which is fine. So these are seven things that you should start with. And again, you don't have to buy, you know, these great big $30 bottles. You can start with small bottles, especially if you don't have a lot of room. Like we have tons of room, but if you don't, get the smaller bottles. So let's talk about tools and equipment that you're gonna need to serve your friends and your guests some of this booze, some of these cocktails you're gonna make. I have Nice little assortment here. So the first thing you're going to want to get is a shaker. Now this is a three-piece shaker, also called a Hawthorne shaker. It's exactly that. One piece, two piece, little built-in strainer, and the little cap for it. What I like about these, and when I was first starting out to mix drinks, this was almost foolproof. It never leaked. You shake it with one hand. But sometimes they're a little difficult, like this cap will vapor lock on, and sometimes even this part can be tough. There's other type of shakers, like you saw me use earlier, which is a two-piece. I'll show you. You have a shaker, and then you can use a pint glass like that, or sometimes they have another piece that will fit this. There's a cheater tin pieces. back there. Oh, yes, there is. Sometimes... You can have a small tin like this, and that will fit in also. You see bartenders, this is what bartenders tend to use. So the advantage of the two-part is, is that you don't have to rinse them out. They're inexpensive, so you can have, I think we have 12 of yeah. each size, so you can make cocktail after cocktail after cocktail. The problem with the Hawthorne is you got to use it and then wash it out and then do it for the next one. So it's kind of time-consuming. It's also yeah. pretty slow. Yeah. If you're making different, multiple different cocktails. So what's the other equipment? What's all this other stuff in here? Of course, you're going to want some cocktail picks. We love these metal ones that we can use over and over and over again. But you can use little bamboo ones or whatever. We have a muddler. What's a muddler? Muddler is when you're doing things like a mojito or berries or something, and you're bashing it in the tin, breaking it down. That's called muddling. A jigger, double-sided. This happens to be ounce on one side, ounce and a half on the other. This is the most common that they have, and they're not expensive. Um, sometimes you see them that are bigger, that have like two ounces or three ounces on one side. I don't like jiggers personally. I always spill them, so I like using this type of, well, a measuring cup for batches, or even just this little, little guy here from OXO, this little measurer. Uh, it's, it's a little spout. It's pretty good. My own personal preference, anyway. What else do we have in here? Of course, you're going to want a corkscrew. Basic corkscrew. 
you don't need a fancy machine. You don't need the electric ones, the rabbit or whatever it's called that just goes zoom and takes a basic corkscrew. You want a bottle opener and can opener, sometimes called a church key if you're old like me and you remember that term. Importantly, a strainer. This is called a Hawthorne strainer. And this would fit in your shaker like that, as you saw me do earlier. One of these cocktail spoons is essential because not every cocktail gets shaken. Sometimes you want to stir, and this is what you need, this nice long spoon. These are all very inexpensive. And then we like to keep also a little fine mesh strainer. And because sometimes you don't want all those little ice cubes, ice crystals rather, when you shake a cocktail and you get that ice in it, you want to strain that out. Or if you're using a pulpy juice, you want to get that pulp out so you have a nice smooth cocktail. And you can get sets of these really, really inexpensively. Mm -hmm. I've left a link in the um, description below from something from Amazon. Let me see if I can bring this up. Here you go. So for $33, you get every one of those items plus some pourers, get out of there, some pourers and some wine stoppers. Mm -hmm. In a nice little case, it just is not a lot of money. Once you get more experienced, you'll upgrade the quality a bit more mm -hmm. and things like that, but you, you can't go wrong. Yeah. And you can buy all these things separately too. If you don't feel you need these fancy little pourers like we have. Um, Hold on, try that again. Oh, okay. There we go, sorry. Here we go, which I forgot to show you. I was um, looking at the wrong screen. Oh, that's all right, dear. But if you don't feel you need these, don't buy them. So that's the equipment. Let's talk glassware. What Hold on. Before we go that far, let's talk about space. Okay. All right, because they said sure. they don't have a lot of room. Right. Where could you start a bar if it's not... Now, we have a dedicated bar that we had built for this so house. So there's How lots of options for that. We do, as Phil was saying, have a bar that was built into the house. When I was single, 100 years ago, I had a small apartment. I just used a little boutique table, and it had all the basic things on it. It was one of those little round tables, a little tablecloth on it, and that's what I used. You could use one of those little rolling carts. Like this there. note. From Avery, my mom had a gold trim bar cart that she would roll from room to room when entertaining. It was quite cosmopolitan. <laughs> That's great. I love that. We, we, we have one upstairs. I was just going to say that. We have a very small one upstairs that we use. It sits in our dining room and it, it's a, for like cognac and liqueurs for after dinner. And most of the time it just sits there, but sometimes we'll do the same thing. We'll wheel it into the family room or the living room, wherever our guests are, and, and bring out the cognac or whatever. So there are options. You could get a little bar cart like that. You could use a little table. You could use the top of your fridge. You could use a space in your countertop. It, it's just, you gotta be a little creative maybe. But there's lots of ways to do it. Another suggestion is a lot of people have a couch table behind your couch, mm -hmm. right on that. Yep. You can use um, all sorts of things. So why don't you tell them what we used to do in Paulsboro? And our first townhouse. Well, and in our first townhouse, too. So when we first got together, uh, we lived in, in our, our townhouse had a great big family room. It was supposed to be a dining room, family room combo. And it was the width of the house. So we used another area for our dining room. So we said, what are we going to do with this? And I said, ha, let's build a bar. So we didn't have the money in those days to go out and buy a bar. So we got very creative. We, for a lot of years, for about even, 20 years. Even our second uh, house, we used it. Yeah, we had cinder bricks, a banquet table on top of that. Painted black. It was painted black, shiny black, glossy black, and then we had fabric covering the whole thing all the way around. No one knew it wasn't anything but a bar unless they went behind it, and it was like everyone was amazed that. And then behind that. it was some, some right. plastic shelves for the bottles. Yeah, we and... had the whole setup underneath. Yep. Mm -hmm. We did that for a long yeah, we time. We did that for four years in that townhouse and then 11, 11 years, years in the old house. Yep. And then it was finally retired. But you can, you can get creative. You'd probably be surprised. And if you're just starting out with a small amount like this, it's not going to take up a lot of room. I even used my piano in one of my apartments as my bar. And drove my mother up a wall. But The other reason you don't need to buy 
every single alcohol. So for example, if you go with vodka, there's dozens of flavored vodkas. Once your friends know you're starting a bar, they will stock it for you. Yep. They will bring what they mm -hmm. want to drink and yep. then they'll leave it for you That's and your true. collection will grow. Yep. But you only need to start with the basic seven. Yeah. All right, let's take a minute before we go any further. Let's bring up the map and see who's here from where. We'll do the Facebook ones first. So we got, ooh, Captain Barbecue. Ooh, let excellent. Me, uh, let me make that map a little bigger here. From Rochester, excellent. All right. We know lots of folks up we in Rochester. We do know a lot of folks in, in Rochester. All right, where did my mouse go? There we go. And then we got Robbie J from Rehoboth, Rehoboth. Beach. Very good, welcome. Thank mm -hmm. you for joining Mason us. Mason from Philadelphia. Excellent, first time here. Welcome, Mason. We've got Melanie from Atlantic City. All right. Excellent. Coming We've got for the us. Cocktails. All right. Let's see. We have Shadi B from Minnesota. Oh, it figured All that right. out. Yay. From Minnesota. And then we got Excellent. Excellent. Suzanne from the Florida coast. Hey. Hey, that Suzanne. One too. Let's see if uh, Shadi B from Butte, Montana. No, it didn't get that one. Because it says but Montana. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> okay. And then Stephen Joanne from Brigantine. Will it get that one? Maybe not. This does it from a world database. Excellent. So it does it as a city state pair. So sometimes it can't figure it out. Um, let's see. We got Rob from, from, NYC. C from California. <laughs> uh, da -da -da -da. Who else have we got here? California. Okay. I'm Melissa's from Michigan. We know our Long Island boys are watching too. We know Ken is on anyway. So sure yeah, but I would assume uh, uh, Phil and Dixie from uh, New York are watching and mm -hmm. a few others. From Binghamton. All right, and let's I'm sure get rid of the kids map. are watching. Okay, back to me, Bob. Back to you, Bob. Yay. Hold on. Oh, we oh, have what? two notes okay. from people. Um, we're over here. Do, 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 do. Correction, Little Water Distillery in Atlantic City offers wonderful drinks and great company, $9 to $11 each. Okay, I guess that's where you're from. Don't keep the alcohol over the fridge too hot. Well, yeah, that's that can be. You're right, Steve, it can be. But I've done it anyway. When that was the only room I had. And didn't know any better, but you could do it. All right. Let me clear my screen here. Okay. So okay. back now back, back to me. Now it's back to you. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what 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 what? What? Um we oh. had these. It was supposed to be something to go to with it. So apparently I like to have little nibblies. <laughs> So today, and I was, I was going to cook some of this stuff on camera, but then it was a choice of cook on camera or mix cocktails on camera. So we're going to be making some cocktails if he'll let me continue ever. But today we have some figs with gorgonzola wrapped in prosciutto. That's an upcoming episode. I've got some cheese and some kibasi and these little pretzel-y things that look nifty. Uh, I had a bunch of other stuff, but I don't want to spoil our dinner either. So this will... This will keep us going, and um, hopefully, would you like me to deliver, dear? Yes, please. Okay. Excuse me. As the arm reaches over. Yay. Yay. Now okay. it's back to you. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Okay, because if, anyway. All right, so we talked about the booze. We've talked about some equipment. We're going to serve it in. Glassware. There's tons and tons of types of glasses out there. The reality is you don't need all of it. Okay, from do I need all those fancy glasses like margarita glasses? No, you do not. What do you need? What should you have? You can get away with serving almost any drink in a rocks glass. Manhattans, martinis, margaritas, they can all be served in this. Vodka and cranberries, screwdrivers, highballs, all of that. If you have a nice tumbler like this, which would also be called a highball glass because it's high, uh, this would be your other option. So these are two sizes. Uh, if you think in most sets of glasses that you buy, there's a tumbler 
and then a rocks glass. So these are two things to have. Now, if you want to branch out, and you will eventually. Um, is this not true? You need, you need a fancy acquired glasses. Yes, Kenneth, <laughs> but no. So, of course, you've seen the martini glass, the all-purpose martini glass. Another version of that is a coupe or a champagne saucer. Back in the 40s and 50s, this was the thing to have champagne in, even in the 60s. This is called Collins glass because it's narrow and tall. And traditionally, that's what Tom Collins's are served in. Now, what's interesting is this and this hold the exact same amount. You wouldn't think so, but they do. It's one of those tricky sciencey things. All right, what else do we have? An all-purpose wine glass. Some would say this is a white wine glass. Some would say it's a red wine glass. But you can serve different types of cocktail in this, like sangria, things like that. And, of course, a flute glass. And you think that's a unitasker for champagne or sparkling wine. But if you make mimosas or blinis, then this is what you want to serve it in. But all of them, I wouldn't serve a mimosa in this, but if this was all I had, then I would make it work and use it. So this, I would say, is your starter glass. So that's glassware. Are you okay over there? Yeah, Can I'm I just keep going? Okay. looking at the Facebook messages coming in to see if anything are relevant. Okay. <laughs> so what are you going to serve this with? How are you going to make these drinks? Let's talk mixers. Oops, sorry. What? I realized you was stuck on your pants. Oh, that's all right. Ugh, let's bring this over. I've got a bunch of mixers here. A mixer is something that you can mix with any of these things. Most of the time, it's something that you can drink on its own. And you can use them to make mocktails if you don't drink or you have someone there who doesn't drink. Now, common things, of course, orange juice and cranberry are probably the most common. Sodas, colas, ginger ales, uh, a seltzer or a club soda is important. Whether you like ginger ale or 7-Up, that's your choice. And then some of these others, tonic water, good thing to keep around. And then we have some of these little funny things that you wouldn't drink on your own, like simple syrup, uh, grenadine. But these are things that are important to mix in your drinks. And they, are, they will sometimes work with some of these other things to make a cocktail. And then, of course, there's all the citrus juices. Is the modifier and a mixture the same thing? No, and we'll talk about that. Um, besides orange juice, there's lemon juice, lime juice. Now, I'm showing you a bottle of lime juice, and you know that we have bottled lime and lemon juice that you can get in the store like this. I rarely use this. Yes, yes, you have seen me use it, but I really do. I prefer fresh, but I always keep these around just in case. They're not bad. They're not terrible, but fresh, I enjoy fresh better. But these are all some common things that you can keep around. They don't cost a lot of money. You probably have most of them around anyway especially the sodas and colas and things. So let's make a basic drink. We're going to make probably the most basic drink of all. This is what I go to. How do you remember all those recipes? We have a, an uh, app on our phone uh, called uh, OneNote, and we keep everything in there. So when I need a recipe, or we, there's this really handy website uh, let's celebrate.tv where I go and I look up some cocktail recipes there too. Is that a shameless enough plug there? Ha! Now I caught you. Ha! Yeah. So um, there's some really good phone apps uh, for cocktails, but the reality is, is out of two or three hundred cocktails, they are made of the yep. same two and three ratios. So once you learn one, you learn them all. And we'll talk about how much easier it is if you forget ounces, and mm -hmm. quarters, and mills, right. and think in ratio terms, it gets easier. Right. So whenever uh, we're serving 
alcohol and we're having a party or whatever. Like up at our campground when we have our cocktail hours, people go, I don't know, surprise me. Well, then you know what you get? You get vodka and cranberry. So that's like the easiest thing to make. And it's essentially ounce and a half of vodka to top it off with cranberry. So you can use a little measurer or you can free pour. So this is kind of a highball. Highballs are, is a broad term for any type of drink that has more mixer than alcohol. Um, unless you mix it the other way, which a lot of people do. But I mean, really, how easy is this? Over ice, some vodka, you top it off cranberry, you could put in a splash of lime or a wedge of lime. Like, where is it? Here we go. I have some toppings here, which we'll talk about. And there we go, a vodka cranberry for your guests, for the guests that doesn't know what they want. And if you're not used to entertaining and you don't know how to make drinks, now you know how to make one. And it's amazing how many people don't know how to make that. Now, if you used orange juice, it would be a screwdriver. Grapefruit would be a greyhound. And then even this, if you mix those other juices, there's all kinds of variations, a sea breeze, a bay breeze, et cetera, et cetera. You want to feel this one or should I? What is a well drink? I wish Ryan were watching. He could feel this the best, our bartender friend. So a well drink, correct me if I'm wrong, drink, dear. Uh, if you just go to a bar and I want a vodka and cranberry, if you don't say, I want Sky Vodka, you're going to get Uncle Munster's basic uh, bottom shelf vodka that they keep for the well drinks, for drinks like that. And they're usually lower end alcohols that are, are well, cheap to close. do. Well, close. If you've ever looked at a bar, when you look at a commercial bar, you'll see a rail. And the rail has a whole bunch of alcohols. And those are the alcohols they make are, they are used when someone doesn't specify. So if, again, if you said vodka and cranberry, whatever their choice is for the vodka is what you'll use. But if you said you want a whiskey highball, whatever whiskey is they have in that well, usually lower quality. Now, yes. in some cases, this doesn't matter. You can have a well, um, uh, a well, ooh, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> a well vodka and cranberry, and then a sky or an absolute, you won't notice a difference, and that's because the, cran uh, the cranberry is the strong item, not the vodka. Right, but a well drink is usually with a lower grade, cheaper alcohol. Um, sure, high class bars is gonna have all high, high top shelf stuff, but it's gonna be more expensive. Okay, so those are some basic mixers. We made a basic drink. Let's talk about modifiers. Someone asked, what is a modifier? What is a mixer? So we've talked about mixers. You can drink mixers on their own for the most part. A modifier. Can you move the ice bucket, please? Yes. Thank you. Why? Because the camera can't see what you got back there. Maybe I don't want them to see. I want it to be a surprise. So modifiers, ugh, here are some modifiers. You're thinking, okay, it's more booze. Exactly. It's most of the time, it's all other alcohols, other boozes. So for example, if I wanna make a martini, I'm gonna take my gin and I'm gonna mix it with some dry vermouth, two alcohols. This modifies this to become a new drink. Sometimes you will use multiple modifiers, like in a Manhattan, my whiskey, my sweet vermouth, and bitters of one type or another. These are, ha these are alcohol too. You might not drink any of these on their own. I know sometimes in Europe and Italy they drink vermouth, but uh, for the most part here we wouldn't. So these are all used to modify your base ingredient, if that makes sense. Does that make sense to you, dear? Yes, it does. Did I That's explain it right? That okay. is the definition. So to me, the vodka and cranberry is a very basic, easy drink. Using a modifier, it's a little more complicated, but not terribly so at all. So let's make so, one. So an example 
of the vodka cranberry with a modifier would be cosmopolitan, right? Right. Or what right. we just had, pomegranate, pomegranate martini. martini. Correct. But uh, let's let's make a modified drink. How about if I make a Manhattan? Mm -hmm. Good, because I'm almost done with. Oh, so I'm making two Manhattans. I'm almost done with this one. So. All right. You're making two Manhattans. Okay, dear. There's okay. nothing like a little drinking, early drinking in the afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Yep, Steve's got the ratio idea. Four, three, two, one. Four vodka, three cranberry, two contra, one of lime juice. Yep. Yep. And that's an easy way to remember is by ratio and not by ounces or mills or parts. And I'm, meh. This will hold two. Yeah? Barely. Barely. All right. Fine. You got the big ones behind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Fine. We'll do with that. Are you way. stirring or shaking? Uh, I'll stir, I suppose. That's a good point. All right. All right, so we don't see that in the question pool, but let's bring that up. Let me when do you ice. shake versus when do you stir? You want to field that? Because didn't we do... Yes, we did. ...an episode? So field that while I do this. Okay, so the shaken versus stirred depends on temperature and dilution. Things that you must shake every single time is things that have creams or juices. And that's because if you don't shake them and try to stir them, vodka and cranberry being an exception because mm -hmm. there's sugar in it, um, will separate. So the alcohol will go to the bottom, the fruit and the cream mm -hmm. will go to the top, and you'll make a terrible mess. Or something like a sour that uses an egg white, the same thing, you have to dry shake it first. Right, so generally, uh, all alcohol, so in this case, a Manhattan, which is whiskey and sweet vermouth as a modifier, you would stir. And that's because when you shake it, you're aerating it and you're diluting it. It's still a great cocktail, but it might have a different texture. So some people say you really should never shake a Manhattan. We actually shake Manhattans quite often. And Because we want it colder. We don't mind the mm -hmm. little bit of extra dilution. As a matter of fact, for martinis, for gin, it's actually, I prefer it. Yeah. So uh, ratios, as was mentioned, my ratio for my Manhattans is a two to one. Now, that could be two buckets to one bucket, two gallons to one gallon, two ounces to one ounce. Easy. In this case, I am making two large drinks. So I have six ounces uh, of whiskey. I'm going to add in three ounces of sweet vermouth, right? Two to one. Three times two is six. So three ounces of sweet vermouth. This is a, the modifier, right? There we go. Right in. And we're going to use another modifier. We're using some bitters, and we like the orange bitters. Uh, sometimes we use a regular, but we prefer orange. Give it a little shake. Just a couple of dashes. Just like that. What are your favorite brands? That's a tough choice. That's a tough, tough question. Brand, I would assume brands of alcohol. Yeah. So I am going to stir this while I talk. Here's my spoon. Um, favorite brands. Well, you can see most of our favorite brands right here. Uh, we like Tanqueray, we like Seagram's VO, we like Bacardi Rum, all the Bullet products, we like Sky, we also like Svetka and Tito's for vodka, the higher end. We're not tequila drinkers, so I don't know where this came from, so I, I couldn't tell you about that, but most of the time we stick with the Seagram's line or things like, like Sky, Tanqueray, things like that. And the reality is in the 750 or the one and a half of your size of alcohol, the difference between lower quality and higher quality mm -hmm. is most times only a couple dollars. Well, we're going to have to mismatch in glasses here unless you can scamper and get me a glass, two glasses. How about two frozen glasses? That would be very, very nice. Okay, you may have to waste some time. Okay, I guess I can do And then that. I need to, while you're pouring. Yes, you need to do your part. I need to do my shtick. Yep, yes you do. 
So I have to wonder how many times on this show that we do, or be in an episode of these live streams, have I mixed in Manhattan? So we need to do a, a, our... so we need to do an out reel of just all the times you've made yeah. Manhattan yeah. and just put them back to back. All right. It is our go-to drink. While you pour and bring it over to me. Yes, dear. I'm going to uh, do my Your little, important job. My important job. So, as most of you know, we try to feature a small cooking YouTube channel every time. For the last few weeks, we haven't because I haven't gotten responses since I always asked for permission to show someone's channel. And then I found one. And then, uh, yeah, husband found one today. So, let's meet David and Todd. And they have a site called Fox Hallow Kitchen. They started their channel in March of 2020, so they are now hitting the three-year mark. And as you've heard me say many, many times, it takes about three years to get traction on YouTube. And usually after year three, you start getting there. So they have 177 videos with 519 subscribers. Let's help them out. Let, take a look at their site. There's a link to their site down in the show notes. Mm -hmm. Take a look, watch their videos. They produce one every week on a Sunday. They do mostly baking, but they do baking and cooking, and they're a lot of fun. And they also shout out other smaller channels too. That's right, and it's kind of neat. Um, they've got a pretty nice selection of videos, mm -hmm. a lot of baking, which we are not, so we kind of watch them pretty intently. Um, nice guys, watch them. They also have a Facebook site, uh, and Twitter and Instagram. Yep, they're all over. They're all over. So, you know, check out their breakfast casserole. Watch one of their videos. I don't get ads because I'm a premium member, so it's kind of neat. Mm -hmm. Now, we can get them to a thousand. Um, that'll make a huge difference. Here and am. we can promote other channels. Yes. Okay, it's back to you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. So, we should also talk about garnishes and things that go when you get into some of these fancier drinks, or even for a basic guy like this, your little wedge of lime. We always keep lemons and limes around for obvious reasons. You can make garnishes, you can use them, the juice of them for cocktails, etc. Olives for martinis, why not? Although we know people who put olives in their Manhattans. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, a jar of these is not expensive and they last in the fridge forever, especially if it's not opened. Cocktail onions, not everyone likes these, but we always keep them around. And the same thing, they're little pickled onions, they last in the fridge forever. And of course, maraschino cherries. Now, I buy these extra fancy ones uh, that are very dark and delicious and they're, they're a little more expensive. You can get just the regular bright red maraschino cherries and that's fine. And all these things, Especially the cherries can get put in a lot of these basic drinks. It's fun to have that little red cherry in the bottom. So these are some things that you can just keep around in your fridge. They don't take up a lot of room. For Vicky, gin is the only thing on your list that I won't have in my house. I despise it. I'm sorry, Vicky. I despised it for a long time too, actually. And uh, when I was around 35, I just suddenly went, I think I want a martini. Bobby, is it okay to ask people to bring alcohol to a party? Absolutely. Um, the way we do it, because everyone always says, what can we bring? We say, bring what you would like to drink. So if you like a single malt scotch that's $85 a bottle, I won't say no if you want to bring a bottle and leave it here. Of course not. But I might not have you know, the brand of tequila or whatever, so bring what you like to drink, and we'll make drinks for you. That's the easy way to get around it. What if I don't have the ingredients for a drink someone wants? Okay, then say, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have that. Here's what I can make you. Maybe they'll want something else. Maybe they'll throw their hands up and storm out and cry. Who knows? But you can just offer them something else. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, we, we know people who might do that. Um, I'm on a budget, so I'm concerned about the cost. Yes, I get that. I get that a lot. So when I was first on my own in my salad days, and I had my little bitty apartment, and I thought... I want to have a little bar thing right here. So like once a month or so, I would buy a small bottle of something and then it just suddenly built up. And I had like 
six or seven bottles, and I was prepared for when my parents came over, I could make them a martini. Um, if someone stopped by, I could make them a Bach and Cranberry. So all six of those bottles over there in the 750 size would be under $100. Mm -hmm. And that's name brand. Yeah. So as far as brand, find a brand that you like and, and buy that. You know, you don't have to only buy, you know, you don't have to say, well, I only drink Tanqueray. No, there's lots of good gins out there. I rarely drink, so I don't keep any of this at home. What else can I do for guests other than iced tea or soda? Well, a lot of the mixers and things, you can make mocktails for them. And actually, we're going to start a series on mocktails. We've had a lot of questions and requests for it um, to go in addition to Cocktail Friday. So we're looking for those recipes now to say, okay, we're going to make the cocktail, and then we're going to make the mocktail version of it so that you can do both. And it, it's really a matter of being creative. Do some searching online. Um, there's lots of recipes out there. So that would be an easier, fun thing to do if you don't drink, if you don't have, uh, don't generally keep any of this on hand. I know we had a lot of questions coming in. Yeah, I'm getting there. I'm typing, I'm typing. Uh, from Carol, I'm terrible at making drinks. Are either too strong or too weak? Yeah, a lot of people are like that. Uh, we, we have a friend at camp who, when he mixes you a vodka and cranberry, it's more like a vodka, and, and the cranberry kind of went, you know, like, hi, hi, how you doing, as it walked by. Um, it takes practice. Use a little measurer, use a jigger, or anything like that. From Chatty V, I don't drink anymore, so no need for a bar. Any tips for setting up a green leafy smoking lounge at home? <laughs> well, no, because we don't partake in that, so <laughs> I don't know where to tell you to do that. Yeah, well, um, you know, cigar bar and a regular bar, it's just a different version of the cigar bar. Who knows? Well, yeah, that's true. That's true, I guess. We don't do cigars either. Oh, here's an interesting one, and I have the answer for this. Okay. So while you talk about it, let me go get the answer. I just start to expand my home bar to the point where I need a larger amount of supplies. Any recommendations? Okay, so what I would say is let's start with vodka. You have a good premium vodka on hand. Look at then some of the flavored vodkas. The first thing I would suggest bringing in-house is a citrus vodka. And uh, let me grab my bottle. It's right here. So, citrus vodka, $7.50. Not expensive. So you can start with citrus vodkas. Look at some of the other flavors. There are other fruit flavors, savory things, sweet things. Whiskies. You can start with a blended. Then you can start looking at some scotches. A lot of them are very affordable. You don't have to have the you know, rare single malt that's been aged for 87 years, you can start out with, you know, like a Johnny Walker or Johnny Walker Red. They're good starter places to go. I think, though, he actually meant supplies, like glasses and things like that. And I do have the answer okay, for that one. Okay, then go ahead. Because we use them all the time. Um, if you're getting just one or two of anything, it doesn't really matter. Amazon's got some great bar stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Target, if you have a Target in your area, they do. But if you mm -hmm. wanna buy more than just one or two, and we are not sponsored by this company, there's no relationship, we make no money from them. Um, we get all of our stuff from a place called barproducts.com. Mm -hmm. They are a commercial bar supplier. So if I wanna get you know, cocktail strainers, and I wanna see all the choices in cocktail yeah. strainers, so you're buying bulk here. I oh, want some colored colors? boxes. I didn't know we could get them in colors. Yeah, so for example, we just got a whole bunch of new cocktail shakers with rubber liners. Yeah. Uh, we used to have purple and neon ones. The, here, you can see here the three-piece shakers. They're not expensive. They're $4, and you can get all different sizes. Mm -hmm. um, they do have minimums. It's a $50 minimum because this is a commercial house. Um, but you can get some great stuff from this place. Um, Even our little rubber mats like yeah, we should say, have had down the, here We get the today. rubber mats from them. Yeah, we didn't think um, about putting that down. Duh. Where are they? Cocktail stirrers, napkins. Here we go, bar mats. Yep. Um, we buy these by the ton. Uh, these down here. Mm -hmm. We probably have 10 of them here yep. and a bunch at camp. These are the things you don't see in... Uh, a Target or Amazon, 
really good stuff. My only complaint, if they have one, is they don't do any free shipping no matter how much you buy. Uh, they're in Florida, so the shipping is not expensive. Um, but, you know, we typically will buy 100 or so, like for right. our camp, we'll buy a case of glasses. And when you yeah. buy cases, then the discounts are high enough mm -hmm. to cover. Yep. Yep. Well, see, I heard I saw expanding bar, so I think booze. <laughs> but yeah, you can get all the glasses and things, and you can find all that on Amazon, too. <clears throat> I know we have like, like 30 yeah, questions on, Oh, here's a good one, because uh, <clears throat> we, we harp about this one. I heard the vermouth is really wine, and you have to refrigerate it. Is that true? Yes, that is absolutely true. Grab the bottles, because I can see what we already did with it. Okay. Both sweet and dry vermouth. These are fortified wines. Now, in the olden days, it was believed uh, that it would last forever. You could just put it in the cupboard. Look, we learned a long time ago, once you open it, the clock ticks and it will turn. Now, all the brands have a date spot on it where you put the date that you opened it. Now, sweet vermouth is a little hardier than dry vermouth. Um, and we use it a lot more, but it will last probably 30 days-ish. Three weeks. Three, maybe four weeks mm -hmm. in your fridge. Dry vermouth, we only buy in little bottles, but you see, I just opened this on 4-2. Today is the 30th. So this is about done. Yeah, three weeks on dry vermouth. Yeah. Um, you know, you can still drink it, but like if you leave a bottle of wine set out, it, it just starts to get bitter and a little funky tasting. These are, are wines that were fortified with aromatics, with uh, different herbs for each one, but that's how they make it. And my experience has been when we talk to people about martinis or Manhattans, they mm -hmm. say, oh, I don't like any vermouth. It's bitter. And then I ask the question, how old is your vermouth? Oh, it's only a few months old. I said, uh -huh. that's your problem. Yep. Um, and for the beginning bartender, do not buy large bottles of vermouth. Right. Just because a small one is $6 and a huge one is $8, don't buy the $8 one. Yeah. You will never use it. We are heavy mm. martini drinkers, yet we use a tiny bottle because in reality you're going to throw it away. This is especially if you don't bartend that often. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. buy large vermouth. Mm -hmm. Buy good vermouth, yes. but the smallest yes. bottles you can get. All right, uh, Suzanne's asked if I would put the link. I will put it in chat right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've been buying from them for a lot of years A lot now. of years, yep. yeah. Yeah. Uh, where's my chat? Here we go. It's... So anyway, while he's doing that, what are some other things, some other extras that you can get that will even make your home bar a lot better for yourself? Besides all the little picks, you can start buying specialty liqueurs. You know, you can get the rum chadas or a nice cognac to keep around, things like that. Um, garnishes, all these things always keep them around because that's going to make the experience for your guests better, and that's what you want to do. Or if you're going to mix yourself a drink, you want to have a nice drink, right? I would say also keep in a little bartender recipe book. There's lots of them out there on the market. Um, because that way you'll I like know. know where is it? Uh, they're all upstairs in the cookbook world. <laughs> okay. Uh, because when I'm planning our cocktail episodes, I, I need to refer to them. It's easier to have them up there in the library than to have them running down here. And uh, but yeah, there are lots of uh, cocktail cookbooks out there. So you know, get one of those. And of course, there's always the dear old interwebs where you are watching us right now. Uh, there's a great site I I just discovered and I've been using called Liquor.com. From Ken M. Mock margarita, please. Really? You want me to mock margarita? Why? Don't you like margarita? <laughs> What'd she ever do to you? But no, I, I would come up with a recipe for a mock margarita. Sure. Absolutely. I actually have back here, I bought a pre-made mix today, which I rarely, rarely do. There is one pre-made Bloody Mary mix that we do like that I'll buy. I have not tried this yet. I was considering uh, starting out with a margarita and I didn't want to risk 
because I had to buy agave syrup and all this other stuff. I thought, I'll just buy a mix. So, but these are things, when you're first starting out, these are all perfectly fine. A lot of them are very delicious. This is a good question. Um, we had that question already. Uh, now hold on. Do I need to worry about age and freshness with alcohol? Yes and, and no. no. <laughs> so, we've had over the years people, well-meaning, their parents retired, great-grandma died, cleaning out their liquor cabinets. I'm going to bring you the booze. And they bring us these boxes of booze to our house here, or that appears at camp. And it's like, okay, this bottle of opened VO is from 1962, and the label is different, and you open it, and the dust flies, and you go, ooh. If a bottle is sealed, and it's been stored in a nice, cool place, then you're probably okay for a long time. Even these, once you open it, the clock starts ticking. Now, if you have a bottle, maybe you're not a big whiskey drinker, and you you're, have your you know, great Aunt Alice's bottle of VO that she bought for herself in 1978, you probably just want to dump it down the drain. It's probably not any good. Also, things like the cream liqueurs, Bailey's, rum chata, they go bad really fast. Six months once opened. And if they're stored in a warm place, like my parents' liquor cabinet, which was just like a kitchen cabinet down here, it was right next to the stove, so everything was always hot down there. Grab one of the pours, please, with the lids. Okay. Show that off for a second. Okay. Because the biggest problem actually with alcohol is fruit flies. Well, not all of it. I'm getting there. I'll go there. I will. Uh, those cream liqueurs will curdle and they get nasty. Um, there was an incident at camp last year. And so if any of our friends are watching, you know what I'm talking about with the curdled rum chata. It was not us that brought it. I'll just say that. Um, a way to get around that is little pourers like this. We learned a long time ago uh, things like vermouth in the days before we knew to keep it in the fridge, but vermouth, some of the whiskey, some of the sweeter things uh, will attract fruit flies. And we used to keep pourers in them that didn't have this little flippy lid on it. Show the lid, there you go. Yeah. We had pourers like that's on this rum bottle. It's just open. Um, and no, there's, there's no fruit flies in it. So we would go to make a martini and we mix it and it's like, where the heck are all these fruit flies coming from? This is gross. And then we go, oh my God, they're in the bottom of the jar. And we realized they were getting in there. That's really gross. So something like this will also help keep, if you're making a lot of drinks, will keep things like that. It keeps it sealed pretty well. But yeah, you, you don't want to keep stuff around for years and years and years. If you're not sure of how it was stored, then it's just better to dump it. Give a gin and tonic by the pool, and I'm a happy girl. You go, Stacy. Me too. Especially in the summertime. When we're up at camp, uh, we work. We go up like Thursday night, and we both work from camp on Fridays. And every Friday afternoon, around 2 o'clock, a gin and tonic appears on my desk. Because I work inside the camper, and Phil works out on the deck. And... I'll be working away, and, and all of a sudden, oh, there's this tall, cool, refreshing gin and tonic. We call it pre-gaming. Yes, pre-gaming. So this is pre-gaming, because it's not happy hour yet. All right, what else we got, Derek? It's almost that time. We've got a few more minutes. Patty, OMG, I made the Welsh rabbit the other day. I am hooked and will never look at grilled cheese and tomato soup lunch the same way again. Thank you, that's awesome. You know, that episode took off. We had no idea. We we kind of call that... Should I tell them what we call it, dear? Yeah, go ahead. There are some episodes that we do that we say, okay, this is going to be a throwaway episode. It's a great recipe, but I don't expect it to do well. But I want to make it for myself because I love this and we're just going to do it. And it does whatever it does. It always seems that those throwaway episodes are the ones that take off. And it did. It had, in the first hour, what, like 300 views? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. typically our, our videos are not take a while so if we put a video out if we get a hundred views in one week that's doing okay they'll get to four or five or a thousand in a month um welsh rare bear got 535 in the first two hours yeah that's crazy so thank you patty 
All right, I'm looking at the big clock and it's 429. I know I keep asking, but inquiring minds want to know, what is your next adventure? I don't know what is our next adventure. Next week. True. Which actually goes along with this one. You guys are starting your camping weekend soon. Will your live streams be coming from there? It looked cool last year. Okay, so yeah, that is our next great adventure. Camp opens next week. Uh, so Phil's going to go up and open, and then I'll join him later and finish up opening with him. Um, that's going to be the big thing. We have a lot of changes up there. We have new furniture and all kinds of stuff. Um, live streams from up there, probably not, because we move them later in today, so we can leave camp on Sundays, come home, and do them from here. If there's some reason, we could make it happen. But we'd have to plan ahead for it, because a lot of this equipment doesn't travel well. Uh, so we would just have to. But we will be filming up there and doing regular episodes again up there. So you'll get to see Barylicious again in all of its Yeah, glory. filming is easy. We only take three cameras. Live streams, under this table here, I have an entire TV studio switcher yeah. and fiber optic cables that run to networks and routers. It would be yeah. a nightmare. Uh, you know, we did it last year a little bit. But it was only one or two cameras, and we didn't have a whole lot of graphics features. And With all the cool stuff we have, it, tra it won't travel. Even up there, so when we open next week, like right there, they still have snow on the ground up there. And we know we've had, even as late as Memorial Day, snow. we've had snow. So yeah. the funny thing is, when we film up there, by the time we get to film, it's exact opposite. It's hot as heck. We're filming under a metal roof which just bakes in the sun and holds all that heat in. So it's tough filming up there and doing a live stream. We did it last year and, you know, there's, there's sweat pouring down. And Remember yeah. our drag queens, the makeup was dying? Yes, yes, we, we, we've done, you know, the original cocktail episode with our two favorite drag queens and their makeup's running and my makeup was running and, yeah. Uh, so live streams are an adventure up there. More trouble than they're worth. If we have to, we'll figure it out. We, that's what we do. Um, and yeah. actually, because of that, um, and the upcoming holidays like Memorial Day mm -hmm. and July 4th, and right now our, every other weekends are going to crash into that, at some point as we get into June, we will do a couple of week at, weeks back to back mm -hmm. and then skip for holidays because we want you to spend Memorial Day and 4th of July with your family. Right. Um, our next the live stream. To that is. Our next live stream. In two weeks, because it's Mother's Day, we're going to feature everything Mother's Day. Yep. We're going to be honoring our moms, our mother figures, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to be doing some cooking, uh, probably drinking some champagne. And because uh, we've got a couple milestones coming up ourselves. So, dear, look at the calendar quickly. When does our anniversary fall in relation to uh, live streams? Hope, please. Because we may need to celebrate on either one or the other. And that's what we do here at... Let's celebrate TV. We celebrate everything, so why not? Um, our anniversary. It's the 16th. I know when it is. <laughs> the 16th is a Tuesday. Okay. The 14th is our Mother's Day live stream. Mazel tov. That's close enough to me. And probably a week 21st. before that, we yeah. should hit our half a million. All right. So that'll be a lot to so celebrate. So tell people what that is. Okay, so that will be half a million views on our channel. We are we are just this this close to half a million viewers on our channel. Yeah, so this morning we were four hundred ninety four thousand. Yeah, and um, we average yeah. about twenty thousand a month. Mm -hmm. So doing the math, it shouldn't be much more than about a week and a half. So mm -hmm. yeah, us. But we'll be here, and I'm going to put this out there right now. If there's anyone, Kevin, um, or any of our friends who are local. If you want to come and be part of our studio audience and have snacks and drinks with us, then come on over next time. Um, we can set up a camera on that side of the room so you can be on camera and be making comments too. Like we're eating cat. Yeah, true. <laughs> so you might be wondering what's coming up next for Let's Celebrate TV. Because that always gets asked and I don't see it this time. So what's coming up? We have a really great chicken dish from our friend Fenton, who lives in the Midwest. He lives in, I believe, in Kansas. Uh, so Fenton, if you're watching, uh, all those recipes you sent me, I've been making them and practicing them. And we're gonna be making chicken with peppers and olives. 
And it's one of his go-to dishes when he wants to impress a date. Uh, so he sent me the recipe and uh, we, we've made it. We really like it. So I'm going to be making, we're filming that actually after this. And what else do we have coming up? We've got more basic skills coming. And mayonnaise is doing well. Yes, mayonnaise is doing well. I just put it out a day late. Yep. Yep. And if you're watching and you try our mayonnaise episode, I will tell you this in advance. We discovered that my measuring cups upstairs in the real kitchen and the set of measuring cups I had down here in the studio were different. And the ones here in the studio were off by two ounces. So eight ounces upstairs there was 10 ounces down here. So we took, what, four tries down here? before we got it right. It was right. take four with mayonnaise. Yeah. And so if if you're trying my recipe and you measure out your eight ounces of oil and it doesn't come together, check your measuring cup because it may be off. It may not be you. You didn't go past it. It just made the measuring cup itself might be off. Um, and it took us four tries to figure that out. And finally, you know, after the third try, I was ready to throw in the towel and Phil said, is everything the same? down here as it is up there. And I said, the only thing that's different is this measuring cup. So we did a side by side and sure enough, two ounces it was off by. So it's kind of funny. We can laugh about it now. Uh, so but, we threw all of our glass ones out and now we have all oxos. Yeah. So they're either yeah. all right or they're all wrong. Right, but it works with the ones we have. Yeah. So if you have any difficulty with this mayonnaise recipe, that's probably why. Anything else, dear? Nope. It's All that right. time. We're a little after. That's okay. Six little minutes. Bit. Seven minutes. They'll forgive us. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us. As always, you know, this is so much fun for us, and we hope you enjoy it. Oh, what was the brand of measuring cup? It was one that I got at Target. Um, and Target, That was off. Target is my favorite, and that was one that was off. So it was like a Target brand, uh, quasi-Pyrex clear measuring, graduated measuring cup. Um, then I switched to my OXO Good Grips plastic one and it worked like it should have. So, you know, you gotta watch some of those store brands. And I'm not matching Target, they're my favorite. It was just unfortunate that that one didn't work out. Alrighty, we'll be in chat for a few more minutes if you have any more questions or comments. Thank you all for joining us. As always, this is so much fun, and we hope you enjoy it. And if you do, for those of you who are new especially, I'm going to do my spiel. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, etc. And visit our website, letscelebrate.tv. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Instagram. You can email questions, comments, recipes to info at letscelebrate.tv. And, you know, if you have a recipe you would like to see featured, you know, maybe it's great grandma's apple cake, or it's something that you made up yourself, send it to us. We'll test it out, we'll make it work, and, and we'll feature it. We're happy to do that for you. All right, you wanna wrap this up, dear? Till next time, everyone, thanks. Cheers. <laughs>